Well, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you all to our worship service here at First Christian Church. And if you happen to be visiting with us for the first time, this is your first time as a part of our, our virtual worship experience. We extend a special welcome to you, and we're glad to have you here with us today. I do have just one announcement. I'll, as a reminder, the children will have their programming as regularly scheduled today at 1 o'clock, and that is a Zoom call, and information about how to join that can be found on the church's Facebook page. So uh, if you're looking for a way to get connected, that's probably the best place for you to go. Well, I'd like to go ahead and begin our worship experience with our call to worship, and that will lead right into our first hymn. You'll see that call to worship on the screen in front of you, and I'd love to have you join in as we uh, read through it. Friends, we gather this day to celebrate life, the life we have been given by God, the life we share with one another in community, the life that Jesus gives in abundance. Let us be grateful for the joy of life, and let us worship God.
Would you all pray with me? Holy God, we gather on this day once again as we do so often, seeking again the solace and comfort of your spirit. We live in such troubled times. Life is so unsettled with all that is going on in the world, in our community, and today even in our church. So God, let us rest our spirits in you. With your spirit, draw us close to you that we might feel comforted, that we might be strengthened, that we might find again that source of hope that will carry us onward. God, we are in so need of your presence in our life to guide us, to give us wisdom as we navigate the troubled waters of today. God, we think as well of our leaders of our time once more. We, we must pray for them because of all that is going on, that you grant them wisdom and fill them with compassion and love and understanding and the way that they approach their work and their decisions. God, we hope through all of that that safer times will be ahead for us, that this pandemic that has so uh, gripped our lives, that soon we will begin to see the end is nearing, and that we might return to at least some resemblance of normalcy in our worship together and the ways that we live each day. God, we pray for our loved ones, our family, our friends. We lift up those who are healing from surgery or illness, who are battling for their lives through, through treatment. God, touch and mend and heal them and strengthen them and all those who surround them this day and carry them through this difficult time they're in. We pray for those who just feel lost, who are looking for the next step. We pray for those who are still burdened with grief in their life, for loved ones who have passed. Let them find rest and comfort in you today. And God, we pray for the days ahead that while uh, changes happening here in our church and with me bring some level of uncertainty, help us, God, to trust, to know that you are the one in the midst of all of this and that you will provide what is needed so that ministry can continue to be strong and vibrant in the days ahead. God bless this time that we're in Fill us with insight and understanding as we worship in this time together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, normally about this time in the service, I would be uh, reading a scripture. You're, you would see it on that screen, uh, your screen. Well, today we're going to reverse that. I want to say a few things and save that scripture for the end. And when we get to the moment of me reading, uh, we're not going to put it on the screen. The, the camera will just stay on me, and I invite you to hear that scripture uh, for what it is. So long. Bye-bye. See you later. Ciao. Adios. Farewell. You know, we have so many ways to handle the moment of parting and to signal that a relationship is about to change. And I want to say none of them are easy to say. If you've had to say goodbye to somebody, even though maybe at some point you would see them again down the road, that moment is, is difficult. We want to express our deepest feelings and capture in the best way possible the truest expression of what a relationship has meant to us and the gratitude that we feel for that person because of it. And that, I think, alone makes finding the right words hard to do. Some people, I think, approach this moment and conclude that all the words will ultimately fail. They, they just can't live up to expressing what they feel. And it leaves them stuck, at a loss with what to say. For others, the pain of parting is so great that the words that they want to say, the words they know to say, are just held inside. Because to utter even one syllable would unleash a river of tears that would pour out of them uncontrollably. And who wants to feel out of control with our emotions? I also know that some approach the moment with such intense emotion that the only way uh, to move on is to say nothing and perhaps avoid any kind of encounter with that person that they care so much about. We all handle this moment and this work differently. There's something scary about goodbye. I've seen this most often in funerals, and it comes at that moment, you know, if you've experienced it yourself, when the casket that has been open is finally closed and everyone who is there knows this is the moment the family, you know, realizes that the visual parting, the physical presence of the one they loved, has arrived. Those goodbyes have a kind of permanence to them, even though, you know, we know in the back of our mind and deep in our heart as Christians that we will all have that great reunion one day. It still is hard when the physical presence of somebody has left us. The problem, I think, is this thing called love. Love is much more than a feeling. It far exceeds anything that we would label as a desire. Love moves out into our fingers and our toes. It takes over our entire being. It feels so good when we have it, when we're experiencing it, we just don't want to let it go. We want to hold on to those that we love. We want to keep them close. Maybe we get scared, I think, that, that goodbyes will somehow lessen the love in our life. Like we'll lose a little bit of that. We're afraid of the pain that would come and that does come from losing the smallest amount of love that we feel in our life. You can see why goodbyes are complicated. But I've also have in my mind that missing the opportunity to say what needed to be said, the words we really wanted to express, for me, that would leave me with this kind of lingering sense of unfinished business. It would rob me from the kind of ending that does not have to be permanent.
that allows, even in parting, for me and my friends to go in peace. So let me say what needs to be said to all of you. From the beginning, I have felt nothing but your love and support. This has been my experience the entire way over these past five years. You know, most pastors come into a church with some level of apprehension ready for a problem to emerge, ready for some dramatic thing to happen at the beginning, ready for resistance from people, difficulties and tensions that have to be dealt with. Some of them, I think, come into a church kind of bracing themselves for a good fight. But that was never my experience here. Instead, you have embraced me You have embraced my family. You have embraced a desire to do things, a hope for growth. You have embraced the possibility of a different future. This willing spirit, I think, has allowed us to do some great work together. I also have to say that I have been blessed to work with some amazing people. And I can't really begin to list the names because I would fear that in listing the names, one, I'd have to list pretty much every single person in the church. And I'd be afraid if I started that, I'd miss somebody. And I wouldn't want to miss anyone. What has impressed me so much is the willingness of people here at First Christian to work. Whenever there was a job to do, people would show up and help. And we've had some great events together, some that have been kind of long-standing events, wonderful traditions, like the bazaar in November. But also the back-to-school bash that we had, the fall festival in October, and how can we not mention the dessert auction in December. That event blows me, actually end of November, but that event blows me away every time. What giving spirits are a part of that. I have to say I've also been greatly blessed with the opportunity to work with very dedicated and talented staff. I think of Margaret and Linda and Richard and Gina and Mary Liz with weddings, Emily and Kelsey, and really the bulk of my time here had to also include all the support given by Connie. I will miss this place. I will miss this sanctuary. I have to say the very first time I walked in to this space, I was captured by it. I will miss the pulpit. Uh, Some pastors come into this kind of uh, architecture of this sanctuary. They see the pulpit elevated and that big dome over the pulpit that looks like at any point it could fall on you and you'd be gone. But I have loved preaching from that spot. I will miss hearing Linda play. I will miss the beautiful sound of the choir. I will miss so many things, and yes, most of all, I will miss you. For the past 18 years, 18 and a half years, I've served as a pastor, and I have to say, too, that has been a wonderful experience in my life. When I started as uh, a pastor, my kids were just little kids, you know. Max was one. Emily was almost four. And uh, in the span of one week, I left a job where I was managing three physician practices and uh, started working as a pastor of a large church. 
and also at the same time I began seminary. That transition in my life required a lot of change. And our lives changed dramatically. And I have to say the change, <laughs> that was uh, the biggest change was all the love and support that my wife gave me. And uh, I could not be here today and done anything that I did without her willingness to alter her life and to enter into this new uh, world that we did together. But I have enjoyed it. I have met wonderful people. And that uh, is especially true here. Wonderful people. And I thank you for being who you are and who you have been with me. I've heard that I've heard that some people only say farewell because they don't want to say goodbye. Because they don't want to s indicate that the relationship is over. But that is not true for me. The words goodbye are a contraction of a longer phrase that says, God be with you. And it was the way that for hundreds of years, people would part with those words. God be with you doesn't sound so permanent if you think about it. There is room for hope in these words that the relationship is really not over. An ending has not finally come. There is a change for sure. Things are different But like the roots of a plant, planted in a garden, plant after plant next to one another, our lives have become so intertwined. The roots of our lives have grown together in such a way that completely untangling them is no longer possible. So let us say to one another, God be with you, because that is my prayer for you until we meet again. Hopeful words like these were often used by the Apostle Paul. Paul was great at the beginnings of his letters and the endings of his letters. He, he was very eloquent in the way that he would greet the people uh, to whom he was sending his letter, but his endings were equally eloquent. He knew how to say, God be with you. He knew how to say goodbye. And so I end with his words that I think sum up nicely what I would like to say to you. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
when we gather around the communion table, we are, in a sense, transcending time. Because over the course of our lives, we can all remember the people who have gone before us, the people who are just not with us. Maybe they're still in the world, but they're not here. But all of them were folks that we would gather around the communion table. Maybe we remember that experience of sharing and communion together, sitting out in the pews with one another. Maybe you've got some great memories like that of sitting with your family when you were a kid in church and sharing in the communion meal. I think it's like that with uh, meals and dinner tables, you know. We can look around the table and remember the people that used to sit with us. We can envision where they would sit, what they would eat, what the conversation would be like. Meals have a way of bringing back lots of memories. When we gather around this table, it is much the same way. And as much as we remember our Lord and Savior and the great meal that he shared with his disciples, we also remember our friends, our family, who have all been a part of this experience with us. We might remember pastors in the past and know that as you share in this communion meal in the future, in spirit, I will be here with you. We can all, again, celebrate those great memories, knowing it is not truly an ending, but a continuation of life and the journey of life that all of us must take as God leads us. And so, in this moment, we remember the meal, the one that Jesus shared with his disciples, his family, his friends. And he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This bread is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he also took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim my death until I return. For the gifts of this table, we offer these prayers. Dear God, so many voices seek our attention and loyalty. The television, our phones, advertisements, people, good causes. They all want some commitment, some investment from us. Your call, your invitation is different. You want our loyalty but you first have given us yours. As we break this bread, we receive the strength we need to live for you. Amen. God, our creator, we find ourselves in a world of change. The march of the seasons bring change into our lives. We grow older and infirmer. Infants are born and people leave us to return to you. Our society is changing at a rapid, dizzying pace. Yet, the center of it all is you. Your love for us is revealed in this cup, which represents the blood Jesus Christ shed for us. As we drink this cup, let it nourish our spirit. Let 
this moment of communion anchor our past sharing and highlight the promise of the future. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, please go ahead and take a piece of the bread that you have as part of your communion meal and eat that, but wait for just a moment and we'll all say the Lord's Prayer before sharing in the cup together. Would you pray with me? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we're almost done for today, but before we end, before we do the benediction, uh, Joe Rice is going to come up and he's got something to share with us. Uh, Mark, uh, we couldn't let today come and go without um, once again sharing our gratitude and appreciation for you and Lorraine for Max, for Emily, and your service here at First Christian Church. Um, when looking for a way to pay tribute to your service here, to our congregation, um, uh, I, I was asking some questions of folks and said, uh, you know, I've seen some beautiful images of our church uh, in print. And I called Jesse Ward 
And I said, Jesse, I'm looking for a special print. And he said, well, I have my favorite hanging on the wall. And um, it's, it's kind of a one of a kind. And, um, and so I know uh, as you work on your new home uh, and you've got some work to do, uh, I hope that you will find a way to use this in a space that will let you uh, always be reminded of your time here with us at First Christian and the fact that we are interwoven and we can't be separated. Right. You'll always be family. Yep. So with that, I'd like to present you with this black and white canvas of the church uh, taken by Jesse um, in honor of your time here and so grateful and thankful for you um, and not just your sermons and your messages and your thoughtful prayers but your friendship and your guidance and your leadership as well uh, so with that we love you we love Lorraine we love the kids and you'll always be part of the First Christian Church family and welcome here at any time Well, it's probably hard to really see how wonderful this is, but it is a beautiful picture. Thank you, Jesse. And um, I will, uh, this will have an honored uh, place in my home. Uh, and there's so many ways to remember you all, and uh, I want to see this because it will be a, a great reminder of, of my, my time here. Um, I've tried to express my uh, thanks and uh, I want to say that um, it's hard to do a really adequate job of that, or at least in a way that I feel I've kind of said everything I need to say, because I'm sure uh, that I have not said everything that I need to say. Uh, but at some point, you have to stop talking, <laughs> just because it's so hard uh, to keep going. And, um, but I am so grateful, as I've said, to all of you, um, these have been very special years, and uh, I will cherish this place, and I cherish all of you uh, for the rest of my days, for sure. Shall we pray together? Holy God, even amidst tears, we know that you are there to comfort us. Even though our hearts break sometimes, you are there to help us mend back those pieces so that on the other side we are stronger, we are more understanding. We know that in the work that you do with us in these difficult times, you help us on the other side to have a new perspective on life, to appreciate things that perhaps we had not. You fill our hearts with love once again. You make us whole. So God, do all of that work here in my life and in this church's life. That in the days ahead, as they look for that next pastor, that you will give them wisdom and guidance because this is such a great place to be. So bring them to that person. Bring that person here so that your work in this place will live on and continue on to be strong as it is now. Bless all of the leaders who are part of that process. Give them wisdom in their work and give them a great sense of purpose and calling, the importance of what they will do. God, we thank you for our time here today. Bless us now as we go about our week. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, everyone.